Hello everybody, welcome to IndyCar on the 20th of uh, of May. I'm Gordon Ross and it's a sunny Monday morning here in the West End of Glasgow. Now there's a lot of poles flying around at the moment and I'm not talking about the kind that were uh, fighting in World War II and Spitfires. We're talking about polls that predict um, the voting intentions of the Scots. Now, as we all know, polls can be notoriously inaccurate. Polls have been completely wrong in the past uh, and sometimes they get everything perfectly right. There's no way of knowing, but there's been an awful lot of polling done recently about Brexit, about independence, about everything, basically. All kinds of polls flying around um, in the last few days. But two, particularly, uh, seem to me at least to be important. One of them was, in fact, just released today, and it's a poll which predicts the voting intentions of Scots if there was a UK general election. Now, this is not for the European Union uh, vote. This is for a fictitious, hypothetical general election. So if there was one, how would people in Scotland vote? And the the subsample of a, a UK-wide poll. Now, a subsample is basically the Scottish bit of a very large sample. I think they sampled over 7,900 people. Uh, and of that, about 790-something were Scots. And of that group, which is a reasonable sample, usually about a thousand is about what you see in a poll. Scottish, uh, the Scottish um, National Party, if there was a general election tomorrow, would gain 57. Yep, 57 out of the 59 Westminster seats. The other two wouldn't go to UKIP, they wouldn't go to Brexit, they wouldn't go to the Lib Dems, Labour or the Tories. They would go to the Green Party. Scotland would wipe the floor with all of the UK parties if there was a general election called right now. That means, according to this poll at least, that uh, there would be a mass extinction of UK parties north of the border. Ruth Davidson would be out of a job, uh, Richard Leonard would be out of a job, Carmichael would be out of a job, Willie Rennie would be out of a job, all kinds of people would be basically out on the rear. And it would be a clean sweep for both the independent supporting parties. Now that has never, I've never seen that in a poll before anywhere that um, support for the SNP and the Greens is so high that in a general election there would be no UK parties represented in Scotland anymore. Not a single one, not a Tory left, not a Labour Party MP left, not even Carmichael left in the Lib Dems supposedly safe seats in, in the Western Isles or wherever it is. I can't remember where he's from. But anyway, the interesting thing about this is that it now polarises Scotland into two camps and it's basically two choices. We either have uh, in full independence with the Greens and the SNP or we have full Brexit with the Brexit party and Nigel Farage who has no policies, no MPs, no nothing at the moment. The Brexit party is a paper tiger just now. They have nothing. Just social media and Nigel Farage jumping about on a stage with a flesh-coloured microphone, lapping up the adulation of people chanting Nigel, Nigel, Nigel at him. So fascinating as though as this all is, watching Nigel Farage getting um, all this adoration, it doesn't change the fact that the future for Scotland now seems to be settled. It's either going to be we vote to become independent and leave that behind, or we end up with people like Boris Johnson and Farage deciding the fate of Scotland. Neither Johnson nor Farage like Scotland. Both of them hate us. Both of them would like to abolish our parliament. Both of them would like to centralise control and would do so in a heartbeat given half a chance. But what's also interesting about this is that Scottish voters have rejected uh, the past, basically. They've, they've rejected the UK parties that have controlled Scotland for so many decades. They've kicked out Labour. Who would have thought in our lifetimes that Labour, which has basically ruled Scotland for something like 70 years, is suddenly out of business, like overnight, it's gone, just wiped out, completely gone. And who would have thought that the Tories who tenaciously clung on to a tiny little corner uh, of the wealthy parts of Scotland for so long would be completely wiped out as well. And the last Lib Dems, gone too. It's like the death of the dinosaurs. 
Brexit has been like an asteroid hitting British politics. It's just blown a huge hole through everything. It's destroyed everything that came before. And the only ones that are left after such a massive, mass extinction are the small furry animals, the little mammals, if you remember from what happened with them, the dinosaurs. It was the mammals that inherited the earth from the dinosaurs. In our case, the SNP and the Greens, we are the mammals, we are the small furry creatures that have survived this impact uh, and are going to live on and are going to end up running things. And that's the way it should be as well. I think, uh, although, as I say, polls are notoriously fickle things, every poll that we're seeing at the moment is hardening and strengthening the case for Scotland leaving the UK, for ending the union with England. England itself is hardening its case for separating with Scotland as well. We're hearing an awful lot of rhetoric and an awful lot of comments of a very kind of racist, unpleasant nature from people trolling our feeds up here from England is saying, you know, go away then, nasty jocks, be glad to see the back of you. Even Farage himself claiming that the, the jocks would come to heel eventually. So there's an awful lot of very nasty, racist, um, anti-Scottish rhetoric flying around from certain corners of the, the population in England. Not everybody, obviously. But it leaves me thinking that it's really just a case of time now, it's a question of time. How long will it be before Theresa May fails? How long will it be before um, her deal is thrown out for the fourth time, ending her premiership and beginning a new paradigm of Farage and Johnson rule over England, basically, and what England decides to do with itself? England is in, one, is in a very sort of fractious state at the moment. It wants to leave Europe but it doesn't know what it wants to be afterwards. It doesn't have any plan for what to do with itself after Brexit. But sadly, other people, much bigger countries, have got a very good idea what they want to do with England after Brexit. And Donald Trump has made no bones about it. He's been very clear that um, England, when it Brexits, he thinks it will be the right thing for England to do, but that's because he wants to move in and take over. And he wants American uh, health insurance companies to move in and take over the entire NHS of the UK. And that includes ours as well, incidentally, because if Johnson and Farage get their way and manage to close down, disempower or abolish the Holyrood Parliament or the Welsh Assembly or the Northern Irish Assembly, if they get their way, and centralised pair, that's what will happen. So we're in an interesting phase in our history at the moment where Scotland is moving further and further away from the right-wing uh, English vote at the moment. And it is a primarily an English vote. There have been some small protests in Scotland. You'll notice there was a few hundred um, unionists went to George Square uh, and stood under their umbrellas for a wee while. Uh, the other day and then all went home. Many of them covered their faces, interestingly. I don't know why that was. Are they ashamed of something? Many of them had been given salt tiles, which uh, they waved in front of the BBC television cameras with the Union Jacks and then dumped in bins and left under benches. Now that ashamed of Scotland that they wouldn't be seen carrying a salt tile except for the photo opportunity with the BBC. So there are a few sad people left who still think that the future of Scotland is much better if we are chucked out of the EU and we lose all our export business. They really think that that's better uh, than staying in the European Union and being a, a successful independent country with vast amounts of wealth. Sad, really. But anyway, the polls are one thing, but voting is another. And as you know, um, this Thursday is the European elections and everybody is wondering, is it worth voting? And the answer is, of course it's worth voting. It's always worth voting. Because if nothing else, we can actually win three seats at the moment. If we get enough votes, we can get three SNP MEPs uh, into the European Parliament. It might be that, um, that the Brexit Party gets a toe in the, in the door here as well. And it might well be that the Greens will win the seat as well. Either way... Again, Scottish politics is polarising. SNP and Green versus Brexit at every level of politics at the moment. All the UK parties now are has-beens. They are all 
about to become extinct. Ruth Davidson will be drawing the dole shortly. So will Willie Rennie. So uh, will Richard Leonard, who nobody even knows in Scotland who Richard Leonard is anymore. I think um, on Thursday, if we all vote for the SNP, that's about the best thing we can do at the moment. I know there will be some people who, who cannot vote for the SNP, will never do it. But if they change their votes from a pro-UK party to the Greens as a, as a way of helping, then that would definitely help. Um, it's not it's not something I would advocate doing, but if you if you cannot throw the SNP, then vote Green. But everybody else, get out and vote. Make sure you're registered. Get down to the polling booth and vote for the SNP. Make sure that we send a message to Europe that Scotland does not want Brexit. Scotland is not interested in far-right politics. And Scotland is going to be independent and back in Europe before you can blink. We are not going to put up with this anymore. We've stayed silent for a long time. We've been ignored for two, nearly three years by the unionist parties and they're paying the price at the polls now for ignoring us. They are going to be chucked out. There won't be any more Conservative and Unionist Party. There won't be any more Labour Party in Scotland. There won't be any more Liberal Democrat Party in Scotland. There won't be any UKIP Party in Scotland and there certainly will not be a Brexit Party in Scotland because there isn't enough support for them to win any seats anywhere. Not here, not in, in our uh, list of MPs either. I am glad that things are going the way they are, not because of Brexit, but Brexit has been a catalyst. It's made people wake up and see how powerless Scotland is when faced with a far-right takeover of the UK by a guy like Farage, who is a moral coward, who ran away, remember? when the Brexit vote was a success, he made a speech and then disappeared. He had no policies, he had no idea what he wanted Brexit for, he just wanted Brexit and that was it. The real reason Farage worked so hard to get Britain its Brexit vote was so that he could bet on the money markets and make millions for himself and his insider trading buddies. He's going to do the same again. And there are idiots in England who think that he is the Messiah, who think he's going to lead England to the promised land. But the promised land is a land of private uh, medical insurance, poverty, austerity, and America telling England what to do. Not the other way around. England's not going to be a big power anymore. It's going to be a vassal state of Trump's America. And frankly, that's not something I want for my country. I don't want that for Scotland. I want Scotland to be free to follow its own path. Scotland will be the only part of the UK which is entirely pursuing green policies as well because of the SNP and because of the Green Party and because we reject the old dinosaur ways of fossil burning, of nuclear energy, of nuclear weapons, all of that we shall leave it behind uh, and we're going to become the new paradigm, the new, the new country to be uh, emulated by others. The Americans at the moment are trying to, at the moment they're trying to start a war with either Iran or China and they want probably a war with Iran because they know they can beat Iran because Iran's so small but the Iranians have got a lot of weaponry it would certainly cost American lives, thousands of American lives if they tried to attack Iran. The Chinese a much bigger threat to America. If the Americans went in their mob handed in the South China Sea, they would suffer for it. And uh, Trump at the moment is a dangerous man. He's, he's splitting countries up. He's trying to wreck the EU. He's trying to annoy the Chinese. He's pulling out of every deal possible. He's pro-pollution. He's pro-nuke. He's pro-fossil fuel. He's pro-coal. He is basically pro-everything toxic, nasty and unpleasant about the past. And that's what England's future is going to be. If they stay with Brexit and they go with Farage and they go with Farage's pal Trump. Remember Farage campaigned for Trump? Trump's friend is bankrolling the, the whole Brexit party. The whole thing is a stitch up between the two sides and they're, they're trying to win it all on social media. In Scotland, the situation is very, very different. Politically up here, we are much further to the left and we will stay that way. And I'm, I'm glad we're staying that way. We should be there, we should be socially aware, we should be morally upright, 
We should not be allowing poverty, we should not be allowing homelessness, and we should not have any food banks anywhere at all. At the moment, I mean, Nigel, not Nigel Fry, sorry, uh, Jeremy Corbyn yesterday in Parliament was astonished to find that a government department had set up a food bank inside its own London headquarters for its badly paid poverty wage staff to get something to eat. That's how bad Tory government is. That's how bad it is when government departments are setting up food banks in their own offices because they're failing to pay a living wage to some of the uh, the more, shall we say, the more manual workers uh, under their control. That's the future for the rest of the country under the Tories. It's going to be hell on wheels. If you think this is bad and austerity is bad, wait till Brexit bites. Wait till the poverty bites. Wait till the, the export orders dry up. Wait until the taxes on your food have gone up. Wait till the import taxes that you have to pay on everyday items make the prices unaffordable. Watch the inflation rate skyrocket and watch the pound drop in value. These are the definite things that will happen. These are not scare stories. These are definitely going to happen simply because of the mechanics of Brexit. You pull yourself out of a 27 country trading block and refuse point blank uh, to have any kind of freedom of movement or freedom of, of anything. And they're expecting to have the same trading relationship with them afterwards. I'm sorry, it's not going to happen. Scotland is in the ideal position to leave now. It's a case now of waiting to see who ends up running the country after May fails, because whoever it is, and I'm pretty sure it will be Boris Johnson, I'm also pretty sure that Nigel Farage will play some role in the way the UK is governed. But as soon as Boris Johnson gets his feet under the table at number 10, the first thing he will do is shut down the evolution. Because if he doesn't, Scotland will leave before he gets the chance to stop it. We'll see what happens, but I still think Boris is going to move much faster than we expect. And we have to be ready to go before Halloween. I think we're, we're all going to be voting uh, to leave the UK before Halloween. If Boris Johnson gets that premiership, then all bets are off for, for the UK's future. I can't see anything good ever coming out of Brexit. No matter what the BBC says, and no matter how much airtime they give to Farage, I haven't heard a single solitary pledge, promise or policy out of that man's mouth. It's all, we must leave, we've been betrayed, we're leaving, 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 leaving. Nothing about what comes after. He doesn't care. He will run away as soon as Brexit has happened. A country's economy will go into free fall and Farage will be somewhere on a tax haven counting his money because that's the kind of man he is. He's no friend of the working person. He's no friend of the working classes. He's no friend of anybody's except himself. I'm off now. I shall uh, go and do some real work now, but um, remember, get out on Thursday and vote SNP, please, and don't waste your vote. Don't waste your vote on anything else. Pick the SNP, and as I say, if, if you're not an SNP voter and you can't vote, vote Green, but please, SNP first. Everybody do that. We will get those three seats. We will boost our poll ratings even further, <clears throat> and we'll boost our popularity even further. And by the time it comes, time for us to vote on independence, we will have that majority. We already have nearly 60% of people behind us. I'm sure we can get higher than that. I shall see you later. Have a good day. Bye-bye.